Almost one billion people in the world do not have access to clean drinking water. Without clean water, girls don't go to school. Women have to walk all day to get water. There's no chance for agriculture. There can be no health clinic. Without clean water, there is no prosperity for a community. Water is the beginning and the foundation of anything and everything. Well Aware is a nonprofit organization that is providing sustainable, clean water systems in East Africa. When we go into new communities, we do see that there's also an incredible need for education intervention or agricultural training, gender equality education. But we know that none of that can be done until there is a source of clean water available in the community. Innovation is very important to the work that we do. We have our finger on the pulse of technology. Oftentimes electricity isn't even available and solar is the cheapest to install and then is almost maintenance free and is completely cost free for the community. We see disease rates drop like almost overnight once we have clean water in a community. So that's the reward. Being a mother of invention, it's a huge honor for me and I get really excited when I get to be a part of something that will help us spread awareness. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Gail Zamakaman, and I am really delighted to be here today to talk to you about a change maker and a Toyota mother of invention who is making a difference every single day. And I want to start, as everybody's thinking about lunch, <laughs> with some statistics that are frightening, right? Diarrhea from unsafe water is the second most common cause of infant deaths worldwide. A child dies every 20 seconds. Kids lose more than 400 million school days each year to water-related illness. And women spend an estimated 200 million hours collecting water every day around the world. So our next uh, guest, and the person whom I have the privilege of having a conversation, is really putting uh, her actions where these words and these numbers are. And Sarah Evans. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We are at Women in the World. Tell us why clean water, which can sound like an unsexy issue to people who don't understand how intimately uh, related to everything you do, it, it does, you do in your life is. And why does it matter to women and girls? It, it matters to women and girls the most. And I know it, it's a difficult perspective for us to um, understand here because it's so readily available to us. We walk out of bed, we turn on the faucet, and there's the water. Um, but in the developing countries where we work, it is the women and the girls that spend all day, every day, walking to collect water. Um, they're also subjected to violence when they're out in the field all day, walking back and forth. And so when we're able to provide a sustainable, clean water source in these communities, then the girls are going to school, right. the women are creating commerce, and they're uh, being able to spend more time with their families right. and support It's not their just kids. water, it's business, it's education, it's the whole chain of it's girls' lives. It's the ripple effect. Yeah. So anything that we feel called to help in these areas, yeah. be it education or agriculture, gender equality, it all has to start with a source of clean water. Otherwise, hours of your day are spent going to get water or figuring out, you know, sometimes you miss your school lessons because of it. That's true. And a lot of, most times, too, in these areas, even if they have the water, it's going to be contaminated. Right. And the disease rates are just so high. Right. And girls, too, once they um, have hit puberty, then if there's no water at the school, yep. then they can't go to school. You miss a week of school out of a month, then you're not keeping up and you don't get to go to school. So we're seeing in these communities that once we have water that's close to a school, girls are going to the eighth grade for the first time ever. Right. In this right. Area. So it's not just about clean water. It's about having your future it much is. more accessible and actually being able to control it. it. We're changing these communities for generations to come. Yeah. So when we talk about this, you know, well aware does this work. And a lot of people say, oh, yeah, there's one more foreigner going in with an NGO. So one more do-gooder who's going to come talk to us. But I think what really struck me about you is this quote, which said, uh, they know better than, they, than we do what they need. It's not an unsolvable problem. The communities have potential and their own solutions for success if just yeah. given a few resources. Yeah. Is that how you see your work? I do. Um, and I, I, I think that there is a big problem with a lot of international aid. Um, and I don't often get the opportunity to distinguish um, our work, so thank you for that question. 
Um, we start with a huge respect for our communities as soon as we go into an area. And that means immediately in our first communications, we're just in inquiry mode. So we're asking questions. We want to know what their plans for development are, what their history is with attempts at agriculture, um, because they know what they need, and we just need to hear it. And, and then we get to plug in anything that they lack and not anything that they don't. And so I think that's a big part of how we've been so sustainable. Yeah. Well, and your own story of how you came to Wellware and to creating uh, this organization that helps communities put wells in and, and sustain those wells after uh, your work is done. You know, you were a corporate lawyer, <laughs> kind of looking for a mission in life in some ways, right? And, and then you came across the need for this. What do you do when family members say, you are totally crazy, you have given up your house, you've given up your car, you sold your car to subsidize your organization, you're going to Kenya to help people, what are you thinking? You know, you have this nice job in a 401k back here in Austin, <laughs> why are you doing this? And a house, I had a house. <laughs> and a house, yes, I don't want to forget that. Um, yeah, my, my, my family thought I was off my rock <laughs> in the beginning. Um, but I just, I kept at it, and after a few years when they, they saw that, hey, I wasn't going to quit, <laughs> I was, I, I really knew that, well, I knew, I, I knew the impact of what we could do, and then I also figured out a way to make projects that actually worked, because most of these projects yeah. don't. Um, and they started to see what was happening, and now they're just incredibly supportive. <laughs> yeah. They're saintly, actually, yeah. And your work as a mom, do you think that that influences your work with Well Aware? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, You have one daughter who's five. I do. I'm a single mom, and so she and I are a, a really amazing team. And I, she was not yet born when I started doing this work. Um, and I remember uh, when she was just an infant, and I was breastfeeding, and my team was in the field. And so I was up in the middle of the night talking to them about something, and uh, I was with her, and I got off the phone, and I, I sobbed for an hour or two because... I couldn't imagine having my baby and not being able to provide for her or knowing that what's coming from me that is supposed to sustain her is going to make her sick. I couldn't. So I was passionate before, but now this is my life, and it, it just, it's so meaningful and is so powerful for women and girls. How many people have you reached with Wellware so far? So we've been able to serve 155,000 people so far. So and thank you. Thank you. And that's in um, 37 different communities. And what is your goal as a mother invention? I know you've already put the money to work. What is your yeah. goal in actually reaching people? And I know you also have reached people here in America who've been really moved by their ability to help other people. We do. Um, this is a great year for us. Um, we uh, are moving into some new countries this year, um, and we're also some developing some technology in the field to help further empower our community members to be able to troubleshoot any issues that they have with their water system on their own. Um, and uh, we, we do empower people here. And I, we accidentally came upon this fundraiser right before, before we even did our first water well, and it's called the Shower Strike. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who write in your home or work at home and sometimes forget to shower for a day or two or three, now you can do it yeah. for a good cause. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. We say, you know, if you never thought you could make a big impact from your couch, we're about to blow your mind. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it was an accident at first because I worked from home and I didn't shower. <laughs> and everybody said, let's I won't say I know that with. personally. But. <laughs> Um, but in the, the first year, in 2009, it was a, a success, and now we do it every year in April. It's coming up in two weeks. And we have companies and, you know, just lawyers and school children, groups of school children who participate in this online fund, fundraising campaign. And they, they tell us that it helps them connect with this cause in, in a gentle and even a fun way, and they can make a big impact. And, through well aware, every ten dollars provides clean water to somebody for decades. So every ten dollars that anybody raises, they right. know that they've changed somebody's life. So if you don't shower, you're bringing clean water to other people. It's true. 
right? Yeah. I mean, that's the whole idea behind the fundraiser. Right? It is, yeah, and, it, it, and it's showerstrike.org if anybody's interested in joining us. So go to showerstrike.org. We can all be lazy for a good cause, too. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you, because I think at this moment, we're all wondering how can small things that we do each day make a big difference? Yeah. And I think you've given us one more way to make a difference through our daily actions and, and to spread uh, some kindness and some, uh, you know, real change for the better. So, Sarah, Evan, thank you so much for joining us, and thank thanks to so all much. of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to me.